All right, greetings humans, and welcome to this part two of the talk from yesterday. So we're on our usual core academy schedule. Um, and today we're gonna be talking about more things that I wish I'd known in core, but to, this is the scripting edition. So we're gonna be talking about things related to scripting a little more advanced than yesterday um, that uh, were a, took a little bit longer to discover for me. Um, also interested if, for everyone in the chat to tell me the things that took you the longest to figure out about core. Um, always and forever, you can literally always tell me that it is the most interesting question for someone in my position. So yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to get started with uh, things I didn't know part two scripting edition, and we're going to talk about um, some things. So the yesterday we talked about uh, things related to modeling, pivot points, custom materials, creating templates, um, and how core files are saved, um, groups and folders now core files are saved on your computer. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, t check out the VODs right now. We have that um, all documented for you to find uh, later. And today we're going to be talking about things that are weird about scripts. Um, and I'm going to tell you the weirdest thing for sure for me that took me the longest time to understand was um, where scripts exist um, and um, how that interacts with the hierarchy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new script. Let's actually, let's do, we'll just use the script generator. Um, if you don't know about the script generator, it's the greatest thing. I'm going to use a player join leave script, create new script and call it a uh, player join leave very creatively. Um, I actually don't think I'm going to be using the code in the script to illustrate what I'm talking about here. Uh, but as we know, one of the weird, not weird gotchas, but one of the things not doing what you expect them to is um, that scripts are not immediately put in the hierarchy. So just creating a script does not mean it will run. The player joins script, prints, we can see over here, it prints, prints who joined and who leaves. But if I run it right now with my event log open here and press play, we'll see that nothing gets printed that I joined. and. Um, uh, nothing got printed that I left. Next thing I need to do is if I want this to run immediately when um, the script is created, um, I can put it in the hierarchy. And now when I press play and open the event log, it'll say player joined course Linkus um, and later say player left. Um, it's very contemplative. Uh, is that crystal? That's crystal. Um, yeah. So that's uh, the basic idea for that um, and seems pretty straightforward. Now, okay, let's say I want to make a script that um, does something entirely different, but also doesn't player join leave. So I want to uh, duplicate the script. Now we talked about duplicating, I could do control W um, and I'm gonna take this one and I want it instead of saying player join to be like, let's have it print to screen. Um, so we'll say print to screen, which is, this is by the way, just also a really useful um, function um, that uh, it just, just changes your debugging to show up on the screen. So it's nice if you just don't want to look at an event log or you want to do things. So we're going to just change this UI to print to screen. Now, again, this is a copy of this and let's join it to uh, player join leave uh, print to screen screen well that, that's it so I can distinguish it now when I press play in your mind simulate what you think is going to happen right I've got the event log down here and I've got my screen up here and the answer is it twice printed to screen player joined course linkus and printed nothing to the event log because when I duplicated this script and changed it I also changed player join leave you can see it also says UI print to screen. And that is because when you throw things into the hierarchy, it is just a reference to the script here in project content. Um, so both of these are basically, we have the same script running twice because we have two references to it. Now, why why is this useful? Well, say like I wanted to like add a custom property that's like, uh, let's say we'll make a string, uh, string um, greeting. Greeting, greeting, greeting. And we'll say, uh, in this one we'll say, hello, comma, space. 
and in this one we'll say we'll add a custom property also called greeting let me all right we're gonna delete this and i'm gonna duplicate this one so that i already have the custom property um that matches and then i'm gonna change this one to uh well met right that's what we say like ren fairs and stuff okay um now i'm gonna take the script and i'm gonna change it to say let's grab the custom property variable i think i'm grabbing it from a different script but it doesn't matter um so i'll put this here custom property greeting and then here we're actually ju just gonna say uh greeting and then the player's name, right? So again, because I saved this on this script in the second script when I open it, because they're both referenced to the same script, um, they'll be here. The, then um, you can see here that it also says greeting. So now, because they have different custom properties, when I press play, an error has occurred, attempt to concatenate a value. Oh, one of them I forgot. Well met. I, uh... Oh, because it's called prop greeting, sorry. That's what happened there. Okay, so it thinks it's a global. If you haven't defined a variable, it's gonna assume it's a global and doesn't know what it is. Um, so that's uh, pretty common. Okay, so we've got this. We're gonna press save and um, if we're learning things. Um, and now when I press play, it says, hello, course linkus, course linkus and well met course linkus. So again, same reference to the same script but once it's in core and in hierarchy one, it has a position, right? I can look at the script and I can see that it has a position, a rotation, and a scale. Um, I could give it a lifespan if I wanted it to show up and then you know slowly fade away. I don't think I would do that, but um, it's interesting property that it does actually have. Doesn't have collision and things like that, but um, or you know um, yeah, I guess it has a scale, but it's a scale of something with zero dimensions. Anyway, so these these are now basically different like core objects that have a script, right? That's one of its properties. Um, and um, also a uh, transform and a custom properties. Okay, so now let's say we really do want to duplicate the script, right? So I'm gonna delete one of these and I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna duplicate. Is that not an option anymore? Hmm. Oh, that's smart. Anyway, if you duplicated it from here, uh, it wouldn't really, um, just edit script. Oh, look at that. That's something I just learned just now. So right now I have it set that my editor is VS code, but sometimes I do like being able to open things up in here. Now having them in both places is probably a little bit hinky, although VS code's pretty smart about adapting to file changes. Um, and I actually really love nesting my script into my editor so that I can just script and see the changes. I think uh, Mr. Dr. Roboto and I were talking about why we like that. VS code, we've got now an extension and I forgot we've got the burbly bubble texture on this car, so it's just wiggling around. What I actually wanted to do is say I want to actually duplicate a script. So I really just want the same script, but with different properties. So what I would do is I would create a new script, call it player join two or something like join leave two, right? And then if I really wanted to start from basically the same place, I would copy all of this and say, but I want this one to be slightly different. Um, and I'm gonna show you the place where I made this mistake, right? Which is, I've brought this up before because I think it's a really interesting demo, but this is back to what my most popular community content is. So here it is, 164 downloads, finally surpassing giant tree you can walk inside, which is not my best work, I'm gonna be honest with you, is a script to allow you to sit in um, a folding chair that I made. Now you'll just notice that I also have floor cushions. So we're gonna import both of these. So you can see, okay, and we get, oh, let's see, I will um, show you this bigger so you can see the error that it's actually trying to tell me already. You, the item you're downloading includes items that already exist by other content in your game. These items may cha be changed while saving the new template. Sit in chair script is used by sit in chair script, sittable folding chair and folding chair you can sit in. Okay, confusing right um and the answer is is that when i made this i thought that i could change a script that i had already published community content change it for the other one and that those would then have separate references that would never conflict but in fact what core does even when you're sharing to community content is save this reference structure which is actually really cool and allows a lot of things to keep working um, but it means that it knows that these were going to continue with save i accept the risks which means that 
my technique didn't work. And that's all right because we're gonna fix it today and you're gonna see what I have learned since the time of creating. I should note that I didn't actually really make the sitable chair script. That was actually made by AJ. Um, and I just changed it because when AJ made a chair sitting script, we didn't yet have a chair animation. So what he did is stick you in the chair and ragdoll you, and I admire it a lot. Um, but we're gonna improve it in a couple of different ways. So let's see, we have floor cushion you can sit in, sitable floor cushion, and folding chair you can sit in, sitable folding chair. Okay, so let's see what happens if I sit on the, sit on either of these. Okay, so we're gonna, Got a weird control system here. We're gonna sit here. We sit, we sit cross-legged. It's adorable. It's great. Um, okay, so now let's uh, sit in the chair. So we'll go over to the chair, run over here and we'll sit in it and we will sit cross-legged on the ground. Um, and that is because what I did to make the floor cushion, right, was um, change the animation from sit chair upright to sit ground crossed. Anyway, we can look at it. So um, that's the basic idea, right? Is we need one animation for this, one animation for this, and there's another sitting animation uh, which is um, sit ledge, sit low ledge. Let's uh, let's pull out the documentation so we can check this out. So I'm going to docs and here in the API section is animations and sockets. And we're just gonna search for sit so that we get everything. We've got unarmed sit Carlo. Um, that's one. Then down here, unarmed sit chair upright, sit ground cross, and sit ledge. So those are our th three um, that we can use right now. So let us figure out, okay, how are we gonna fix this script so that it works in both of these circumstances? And I'm gonna show you, I mentioned earlier that scripts have like positions in the world. So let's talk about, again, I didn't, I didn't really make this script. Um, I just changed it a little bit, but let's look at here in sitable floor cushion, since that's basically the one that we're doing. We have sit on cushion. We have the script in here twice. Um, D instance and delete. That's so weird. Um, so we'll take this, right? Um, and we'll look at how does it figure out where to put the player when we sit, because this is really interesting. I mean, the answer is, is that um, when AJ made this, he used, um, player.set script get world transform. So it uses the position, rotation, and actually scale of the script to determine um, where the player should go. Um, and that is no longer the way I wanna do this. So what I wanna do is replace this with uh, like something like an arrow or something. So let's get into our 3D objects and find our most arrow-like mesh. And, ah, fantasy crossbow bolt, nailed it. Okay, beautiful, okay. So we're gonna use this and we're going to give it a weird material. Let's see here, let's change you to glow and metal dark. Let's change glow to wireframe. Let's see if that looks like what I want. I think we're gonna change everything to wireframe. So here is my wireframed arrow. One of them has a different color because of energy tubes. So we'll just go ahead and um, grab that. Is that not moving this way? Okay, I've never actually experimented with changing these. All right, so we're gonna do this and we're gonna swap this to new theme. Okay, and now we can drag click this, okay. There we go. We did it. We did it. Okay. This is the kind of stuff, right, that these conversations get us is uh, the excitement of figuring out, yeah, how to um, do things like more efficiently and just save some time. I think that's like actually so much of my joy with core is um, I actually want to, I want to scale this on the X so that it's about half that. Yeah. Okay, so you can basically see where I'm gonna put my player. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to put this into, we're gonna remove, we're gonna force collision off for sure. 
And then I'm gonna set the script to hide it once I get there. Okay, so where was I? Sittable floor cushion, it's de-instanced here. And I'm gonna add this into here. And now I'm copying the properties for this and I'm gonna paste the crossbow bolt onto paste. So if you haven't seen copy and paste uh, properties, this is extremely useful. We're going to paste the uh, position and rotation on there. Okay. All right, so let's test. This may only be working because the sit chair, the sit ground crossed seems to just put you on the ground no matter where you are, um, unless you, kind of, unless you move off of it. So let's see. Okay, so it does seem to more or less be reflecting where I am. Let's find out. Let's, all right, let's first change. I'm gonna add it. Let's rename it to um, sit transform like that. Um, and I'm gonna make it a custom property of the uh, function, right? So we've got sit transform here. Um, and so we'll copy this. We're gonna add this to our script. So here, boom, up here. And I'm actually, since I call this sit transform, I'm going to get, now we've got get world transform. All right, wait for object. And then here in the script, I'm gonna substitute in prop sit transform for here where we're getting the script world position. Okay. And let's just command F to see if there's anywhere else we reference the script. No, just when we're getting the custom properties. Okay, perfect. So now it's no longer using the script position and it is using this other object. Um, so let us, we'll press play. Let's see here, attempt to call a nil value method wait for object. Did I, I changed something about wait for object. Um, object, all right, yeah. Stop this, bring this up, we'll save it again and press play. And we should attempt to index a nil value on sit floor two. Okay, let's look at that again, index a nil value. Let me just copy this again because I somehow messed that up. Oh, now it's, okay, let's delete sittable folding chair for now because because I changed that script, it has now got a reference to a variable in the script, right? Um, on the folding chair, right? If we look at folding chair, it does, if I look at the script, it doesn't have the custom property, but if I open the script, it has the variable looking for that custom property. So for right now, I'm gonna delete it and then we'll fix it. Um, okay. Um, so we've got, the sit in chair script um, and uh, we're gonna just delete the whole sittable folding chair so that we don't have to deal with that error right now. Okay, so I press play um, and I'm going to sit and it says set world transform cannot be called with non-uniform scale component. Okay, that's my fault and I actually don't want it to do the scale anyway. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna change it to, okay. So what happened there? What happened was um, Unreal, I believe this is an Unreal thing, does it like interacting, doing actually a couple of different things with objects who don't have the normal scale. So that's like one, one, one. It just doesn't like it. It's like sometimes, you know, you'll try to add something as a child of something and it's like, oh no, you can't do that. It has non-uniform scale. Why? Why does that matter? It's super weird. Um, and if it doesn't have children, it's a lot more flexible, but trying to scale things and stuff like that, you've been before where it says you can't do that, you have to scale everything uniformly. Sometimes that's super useful, but other times it's weird. So in this case, it doesn't um, want you to, actually, let me read that. Where's my error again? Stop. Basically, it won't let me set world transform with a uniform scale, which is like sort of like, then why do you have set world transform? <laughs> if it can't be used for any scale besides ignoring scale. So I actually wanna keep the arrow the way it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix the script in a way that makes much more sense anyway, because I don't actually want the sitting script to scale my player, right? That makes sense. So what we're gonna do instead is we're going to, um, instead of saying player set world transform, we are going to duplicate this line and change it to uh, player uh, set 
world position. To script get world position. And player set world rotation to the transforms get rotation. Okay. So basically, what is a transform? A transform, uh, where is my, there we go. Ducks, I am the knight. Uh, let's look at the API and let's look up transform. Okay, so here it is. A transform is the position, the rotation, and the scale. So it's that collection of three things that you see in the transform category of the properties of everything. Um, and you can, so you can set all three you can create one by specifying a rotation position and scale. Um, and um, and you can create them a bunch of different ways. It's one, one, one for rotation and then, or for uh, scale and then zero, zero, zero for rotation and position. Um, and this is, it's a useful thing, right? Cause you can group all of this. How do you figure out where something is in the world? Well, you need to know three things. You need to know where, you need to know which way it's looking and you need to know how big it is, right? If I'm gonna take any random core object and then put it in the space, those are the three things I need. Um, but to move the player and sit, I actually only need the sitting and the rotation. And we're going to refine that a little bit. So we've got this now. And so we're going to test it. We're going to press play. We're going to walk up to the cushion. And everything's happy. And it looks like it's working about the same way. Now, the one thing I wanted to test is I want to position my arrow actually where the player sits. So I'm going to get this sit transform and I'm going to move it all the way down onto the cushion. And does that look centered to you? All right, let's do that. And we'll save that. And my suspicion is, is that um, it will still put me in the right place. So, um, and that that was working just because sit goes down and we could experiment. Nope, nope, nope. Just uh, let's take a moment, take a moment to see my little, my little skunk head sticking out here character's little skunk head. All right, cool. Okay, so let's just undo that change. Um, and then we're gonna figure out, okay, ooh, so that's hard because how, if someone was using my arrow, how would they figure out uh, this difference here? How far is this? Let's grab a cube and look at it with our eyes. So I'm gonna stick the cube here. Let's grab a bottom aligned cube and stick it here. Cause it seems to be that it's not a full cube up, right? Especially from if I want to be there and it's not, well, okay. Let me, uh, let's see, take off the smart material there. Um, so if I'm looking at this, it looks like it's about half. It looks like it's about half a cube uh, up from, right, which is half a voxel up from uh, where I'm saying. So let's experiment with this. What I wanna do now is, um, let's see, let's look at the, the transform is moving by, so this is, the box is 100. So we're gonna move it 50 down, right? And we could have done it this way too, right? So let's just control Z U to where you are. You're at 70 and this is at six plus, uh, basically 15. So yeah, so it's, a, it's 50. So let's say it's, let's just assume it's a hard 50. And this is one of the things where the, the, the bulky model and the svelte model, um, could have different, uh, measurements there because they're slightly different heights, uh, for players. Um, so let's, I would like it. What I'm, what we're, what our goal is here. I haven't actually explained this is that I want someone to be able to put the arrow down on the seat of anywhere they want players to sit. That is that is the new goal, so that we can just grab random new objects and make it possible to sit there. Um, so what I need to do is I need to basically figure out this difference. Um, so what I'm gonna do, we'll delete this, my little measuring tool here. Oh, all right, upsetting. Just you please, thank you. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the arrow down on the ground of the thing that I want. That looks good. Um, I do want its base to basically be where my character's 
root is going to be, right? The, the root chakra um, for uh, where they're going to be. So what we need to do is we need to add 50 to it. Okay, 50 on the, we can look at the arrows, Z axis in world space. So let's go to the sit on cushion script. Um, and we're going to say world position plus uh, vector three. And then in the vector three, I can say the X and the Y and the Z. So the X that I want to add is zero. Uh, the Y that I want to add is zero. And the Z that I want to add is 50. So let's go ahead and try it. Let's find out how we're doing on this. We're getting what we're working towards. And this is sort of like the harder thing to explain. This is modularity. What I want is I made something that did all the tricks that I want it to do. But now I want something that you can use in more different places. And it's pretty easy to use in multiple places because right now I made two different things. And if you put them together, they break each other. So what I want is something that does lots of different stuff instead of one specific thing. Um, Cause right now you'd have to choose. If you wanted to use my community content, you'd have to pick one. Um, and it looks like most people pick the folding chair and that's because it's my second greatest model I've ever made. So we're gonna sit and it says, attempt to call a soul F vector, vector three. All right. Can you not just add vectors? Let's look, let's go to the documentation. So let's look at vectors. Pretty sure I can just plus them. Yeah, I need to say dot new. So I'm gonna say, hey, make me a new one. And it's gonna be, 50 Z up and add them together. So basically just add 50 to my Z. So we'll close this, um, we'll stop, and then it'll load my script differences because I did close this, save this here. Let's go ahead and test this out. We'll uh, run over here and I'll sit. And uh, yeah, here we go. That looks great. Am I hovering? Does my character hovering? Let's see, we can press tab and really get there maybe slightly. And why don't I try the other model while I'm at it? Um, so uh, we'll stop this preview. Actually, we could do anything and we haven't even worked on setting things up. So now we're gonna press play again and I'm gonna switch to, let's try zombie. Um, and see if we're in about the same place. Yeah, they're both hovering a little bit, but I'm kind of comfortable with it because that part looks good. So um, I would say like if I weren't scrutinizing this and just looking around, that is a happy zombie sitting on a cushion, contemplating. Okay, one of the things is we want to, now that we can check our player versus the arrow, we don't need the arrow to be visible. Um, so I am going to here, after this wait for object, I'm literally gonna say um, prop sit transform dot visibility equals visibility. So visit, if it's a property, it's lowercase. If it's a namespace like vector or UI, it's gonna be uppercase. The T and then the values that are associated with the space like visibility types are always gonna be all caps because this is actually just a number. This is two. This is a fancy way to write two, but also a way where you have any idea of what I'm actually trying to do when you look at the line. So now sh everything should be exactly the same. I attempted to modify, ugh. So I've really got to network it. Okay. So now we've enabled networking. Um, which is just, by the way, if, if networking is still like, why do I have to do this? It's if it changes in game. Um, I want, I was thinking about a client context because then I would only have to change one full client context thing. But since that really only contains one mesh, it's not really saving me a lot. So I'm not that excited by it. Okay, so now it looks good and we've got this general setting script. Okay, what would we need for this actually to work on the chair? Well, we need another custom property. So let's stop this preview. And that is gonna be what the animation stance would be. Now, okay, so there's a couple of ways I could do this, right? I could say, um, type of sit or whatever. But I was thinking about what would be something where nobody has to look anything up for the, like the animation names. I can't make a Dropbox. It would be really nice if I could, but as far as I know, I can't make like, if you do, if you're playing with an animated mesh, you know, it, it auto completes all of the, uh, uh, animation so you can just like start typing and find out what they are, but I can't really do this. So what I'm actually gonna do <laughs> is create an elaborate system of Booleans. Okay. So the first one is going to be cross, cross, 
legged. Okay, so that's one of my sets. The next one is going to be chair. And the third one is going to be, uh, what was the other one, a ledge? Let's see, yeah, let's just call them ground, chair, and ledge. Okay, and then was there another one? There's car. Uh, let's start with these three because there's a lot going on here. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab these three properties and I'm gonna put them at the top of the script. So, boop, boop, boop. Let's see here. We got the visibility thing, so let's just put them. Oops, no, control. What is it that does that? Ha, huh, control B. I'm used to actually using that to bold things in Markdown. So, okay. So here's what we've got. Let me uh, bigify a little bit. Uh, is we've got these three properties and right now they're all equal to false. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, right now you can see that we have this thing called animation stance. Um, and I'm just gonna move it up here so that you can see. Um, and this is, oh no, that is, yeah. So here is where we're setting the animation stance. And then here is where basically what I did is I, in the original AJ script, it, um, it looked at what animation stance you were in and then set you back to that animation stance. But that was basically, if you, my seats were too close to each other, then you could go from sitting in one to sitting in the next. And, um, then you could never get out of it. And if you've ever been in the weird um, instance where I, we, I, I did it on stream the other day, you can basically be put in that sit low. And if you still have a movement control, then you're just like floating around cross-legged. So I actually didn't need to move that. Let me, we'll put you back there. And then we'll, we'll modularize that as well. Um, because like, if you ever saw the stream where I did a coffee shop, if you had a coffee, you were in the uh, hold, unarmed hold, and um, if you sat down, you moved down to the sitting stance and when you stood back up again, you were just holding the drink down by your side. It didn't make sense. So we needed to set you back to your original animation stance. So now we have all of this. Um, and what we want is to, we're gonna create a function called um, set stance. Function, let's say choose stance. End, okay. So, uh, end. Okay, so what I'm gonna say is you can check one of these and that's the one we set. And if you check more than one, it's going to randomly pick between them. So we're gonna say uh, local stance and we're gonna pick a default one. So the default one we're gonna actually pick is um, unarmed, uh, what is it called? Unarmed sit crossed. Um, hopefully I'm right about that. Okay, so that's my default one because you can pretty much do that anywhere and it works. And then we're gonna say if, hmm, okay, I need to think about this. What I wanted to do, okay, so let's just say if prop chair, we'll do a, we'll do a basic one that just picks the last one you did. So we're gonna say if prop ground, um, actually we don't even need to do if prop ground, we're gonna do if prop chair, right? Uh, I don't need this in parentheses, sorry. Okay, so these are all true or false, right? So if prop chair was checked, right? Then I'm gonna say, actually change it to, um, stance equals unarmed sit. You know you're in core when you have to specify that you are unarmed. You know what I'm saying? Sit chair uh, upright. And then we'll say else if uh, prop, uh, what's the other one? Ledge, then stance equals unarmed uh armed sit ledge all right let's look it up back to my animations and sockets and searching for the word sit sit carlo sit chair upright see i've done this so many times sit ground crossed all right we'll double check that one and then sit ground ledge um and if you do this it actually snaps your player to the ground and their legs if you just do it on the ground their legs will just like hold through the ground which is interesting you could use that for things so sit it was ground crossed and then this one is sit ground ledge okay so basically we say okay if i didn't check anything um, then it's cross-legged. If I checked chair, then it's gonna be chair, unless I also checked ledge and then it's gonna forget about chair and it's only gonna be ledge. That's fine for now. And we're gonna add a return that says, all right, give me back the stance. Okay, so now 
instead of saying what the stance is, I'm gonna say, give me whatever gets returned by choose stance. That's it. So if I do it right now, without checking any of these boxes and I press play, um, it gets mad at me because I missed an end uh, near line 15. So let's stop and look at that. If, else, if, oh, is else if one word in Lua? Probably. It's spaced in JavaScript, it's elif in Python, and it's else if I think one word in Lua. Okay, so happy. All right, so right now I didn't check anything, but my default is cross-legged, so that's really good. Awesome. Let's check um, ledge and see what happens then. So I'm gonna run over here, I'm gonna press F, and now I get that those legs, let's, let me give you the full impact of this. You get these legs dangling straight on through the ground and actually, yeah, he looks, I guess it's probably trying to find a lower surface. So he's a little bit through it, but we'll take it. Um, so let's get out of this preview. And then finally, let's try the last one and we'll uncheck ledge because ledge will override the chair the way we've done it right now. And okay, so we've got another issue, which is that the chair one chooses the position based on the position of the feet, but the other two, we might have to revert the arrow thing because eh, it's hard to figure out how it's gonna change that position. We could basically have it change based on what the animation stance was set. I don't know, there's a couple of possibilities and it's not doing what I really want, which is to be able to put an arrow where the character's butt's gonna be. So now we've got these different options. Um, and what I can actually do is now basically uh, pull these, oh, this, these three things out of this template and create a new uh, new group containing these. And we're gonna call this sit anywhere. Okay. And I'm gonna create a new template from this. Um, did I do all the things I wanna do? We didn't fix the stance thing. All right, we'll try it from now and then we'll update it where it goes. Okay. So what we want from sit anywhere, right? Is I'm actually gonna delete this floor cushion is to grab anything you can sit on. So let's just go into, see, I hope at least we're getting near the end of time. So I may need to make sure I didn't miss anything else like that. We didn't really talk about some of the networking stuff, um, but this is, this is, <laughs> I hope everyone has been enjoying this very specific example about modularizing your scripts specifically for community content because I think it is a really interesting topic. So we're gonna go 3D objects, props, and let's hit urban uh, interior for some chairs. So we'll grab like that chair um, and this chair uh, and this bench, okay. And we'll grab these three things. So what we're gonna do is we're going to duplicate our uh, script, uh, our template a bunch. So I have it selected here in my templates and I'm just gonna press the X key to put one here, one here, and one here, and one here. And we'll put another one on the hood of this car right here. Okay, so we'll fix these rotations. Let me let me turn on snapping because we've stuck to snapping so far, so that should be good. Um, and so for this one here, I'm gonna click it and ah! Okay, we're gonna fix it. So what I want, because I'm publishing this community content, and I kind of forgot to talk about this, but this is like a really useful thing, is I usually want, and I do this a lot, um, and it may not be strictly necessary, but I like it, um, which is I want my custom properties that are modifying the thing to be in the outermost layer. So not as a custom property on the script, the way I did it, but as a custom property on the um, template. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go to the script and I'm going to copy the properties. I'm gonna see if I can add custom properties that way. Paste properties does not let me do that. They have to have the properties in common for it to work. So I just need to manually add them. Here we go. So let's, well, actually let's de-instance and see if that changes. No, can't add custom properties that way. So we just need to add the custom properties, which are going to be Boolean. Um, let's see here, Boolean was chair, which actually doesn't matter. Um, another Boolean that was uh, ground and a third Boolean. 
We got this. This is going to be great. This is going to be great, friends. Uh, that is... What was the other one? Ledge. I can literally look this up. This is a very silly thing to be doing this way. So we got ground chair, ledge, and then um, sit transform and hitbox. I don't need the player to be able to change those. So that doesn't matter to me. Um, so I'm gonna have those and then we're gonna go into our script and we're gonna just change one thing to all these things, which is we're gonna say script.parent um, because that's the group. If I put the script inside of something else, that would mess this up. And then I would have to do like script.find ancestor by name uh sit anywhere um this is gonna work for right now so we're gonna stick with this um and we're going to take this and we're going to update the template from this okay so now you'll see we've got these custom properties on all of these so i'm gonna take this one and i'm going to say ledge um and then we will fix the rest of these so we'll make this one is gonna be ground which it is uh this this one is going to be uh, let's see here. Let's do a group select. So we grab this. We're going to make this one ground. And then um, we'll rotate uh, these arrow. Okay, so now we're going to have a problem of I need to rotate the arrow, not the group. That's a ugh. Didn't even really think about that. I guess the world transform will change either way, so it doesn't matter. Um, and now we're going to see my sitting script is probably the one that is most wrong. So this could be weird. And it might be that since the sit low script works either way, anyway, um, why is that weird? You see the arrows like got, let's reset the rotation and then grid snapping and just get that guy right there. Reset that one and hopefully, all right, let's try it. So this one, we rotated the entire group. And then here on the bench, we're gonna rotate just this arrow. Is it have a weird rotation? Or did it just do it because of the way I spawned the template? I don't know. You see like that, that right there? Why that? Why is that? All right, let's test it out. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, so let's press play and we're gonna do all these experiments. So let's first go to the hood of this car. If I press sit, ah, oh, look at that. How lovely, little sitting zombie, so pleased. And there's some interactability changes that we needed to make as well, but we haven't done it. Um, so eventually, right, I would wanna change this to be like stand up. Right now, your character can jump and that gets them out of it. Um, so let's hand over here. And, oh, I left that one at ground cross. Did I leave that for all of them? Okay, but that looks all right. Um, and we'll just jump out of that. And I think you can press F again, is already built in. All right, and that's doing sick ground crossed and the orientation is a little bit weird. Look at the way his feet hover when it's above the ground. That's really interesting. Um, I guess they are trying to have one touch the ground. Here, let me, let me zoom in on it. That's so funny. I know, I like it a lot. It has a lot of potential for um, hovering mystic kind of characters. Okay, so let's get back here. We'll jump out of that. And then this one, I didn't do the transform correctly. I didn't rotate it, so it should be fine. Oh, we wanted to see, he was facing the right direction. And if we do this one, we basically, we've also got that weird sideways E tilt. So somehow we need to figure out what happened wrong with the template to do that. So. Okay, yeah, welcome to this rigorous debugging session with Slinkus. Uh, but this is really useful stuff. So um, in terms of like, especially when you're designing things to be used by other people. So this one was fine, but it was definitely too low. Uh, maybe I can just move it up. And then this one, we just need to reset this rotation. And we've got snapping on, so we... We need to reset the rotation on the group and on the arrow. This is very weird. Okay, so now I'm going to move just the arrow in this one and we're going to move it up and back. And uh, let's do a preview again. So let's run over here and we sit and cross leg. It looks good, but we didn't actually do the thing that I needed to do, which was to stop and change these both to a chair animation. So we'll do chair on this one. 
And one of the biggest advantages of this new technique also is that before you had to move your furniture along with it because it was built in the same bundle, right? It actually would break if you took away the furniture and then separated that out um, because it really wasn't part of it besides just being bundled into the template. But um, obviously it's really nice to be able to um, just build your furniture and then add where you want to be able to sit um, as much as possible. Okay, so now we've got this problem that we were talking about, which is that the chair animation is different from the others, right? So we could basically just have it change based on which one it is and just have it do those calculations. Um, we could, let's see here, what happens? No, we already tried moving it down and that didn't fix it. So yeah, uh, that is about all I have for today. I guess there's a couple of other things. So if I were really publishing this right now, what else would I need to change? Um, if the arrow is rotated inside of the group, I would want to change that. I would definitely check that you can rotate both of them so that you can do it. I want to check that if I drag it out in community content, that it goes a logical place. So I drag it out in community content. It goes on the floor. You can't see the arrow. That's important. But somewhere around here, I can find that and I'll hit this sit script. And if I press F, I just sit on the ground. That's super useful. That's really nice to have. And, um, and so that helps a lot. Um, and so I would need to fix the ch that chair bug because I want it to work right off the bat. And um, I would, what is the thing I'm forgetting? Oh, the community, the custom property, um, uh, let's see here. So we need to de-instance this to do it, but this would also help. A lot of times people don't notice this, but it's super useful. So we can say set custom property cool, cool and it would be like, um, changes player to unarmed sit chair upright animation stance. All right, let's see if that's too long. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, that's, that's more concise and you get the idea. So we're gonna set that custom property tooltip. And now when I mouse over, it explains what this is actually doing in case you didn't understand why, um, I did this. So we can now do, um, right click. Oh no, crash. Yeah, sorry, sorry for the crash. Um, but that's basically all I wanted to go over today. It's about designing your community content, especially your scripted community content to be really easily usable in other projects without messing with anything. Um, and so the more you have options and the more you make them custom properties, and that was the whole point of this section was when to use custom properties, the more you make it so that somebody who doesn't really want to, ideally you would want it so that nobody has to change your scripts ever. Even if they want to change your scripts, you create something like we've seen, you know, people script things with APIs um, so that there's basically a part that is designed for you to change it that doesn't change the initial working so that it doesn't get broken um, because it's really nice to be able to have something that just works like that. Um, so um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's actually, you know what? Tom, somebody, nobody's right after me. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and we're going to fix this. So we were, we've got that. So we're gonna add a custom property tooltip. Oops, that's the crash report. Um, we're going to uh, just set custom property tooltip, just erase my one. Okay, we got it. So I just wanted to copy that um, so that I can be really lazy about creating this one. And this is gonna be unarmed sit ground crossed, ground crossed um yes i would like to overwrite it um set custom property tooltip and um and this one sorry you have to click outside of the actual field where we edit it to get the custom property tooltip option i'm going to do this and this is going to be sit ground ledge right ground ledge animation stance okay so now we've got these tool tips that's really helping enhance the things here and we just have the um the plus 50 problem um and let's see if just changing that fixes it so i'm gonna get my sit on cushion script and oh my good lord i did the exact thing so now <laughs> Mo because I've modified this existing script, it's going to interfere with the sit on cushion and the community content. And I don't really want that either. I do want to delete them eventually, but yeah. So let's go through here. And what I want to do 
is I am going to choose stance earlier. Um, so we're gonna say local stance equals choose stance. What I want is eventually for you to be able to randomize between these. So if you checked two, then I would say, okay, pick randomly between them. But I can't think of an elegant way to do that, so I'm just avoiding it. And I'm gonna say local, uh, we'll call it an offset equals, um, and we'll basically it's vector three dot new, right? And then I'm gonna say if uh, uh, stance equals equals no parentheses. If stance is um, unarmed sit chair upright, upright. Then um, let's just make that it um, offset equals zero. So we'll say offset equals vector three dot new. And I believe that just makes a zero, zero, one. All right, let's try into that. Let, oh, let's add an end here. Let's try that. Okay, so let's see if this fixes the chair sit. We're gonna run over. I believe both benches are set. This one's set in chair right now. So I'm gonna sit here. Didn't change anything. Let's double check that. I mean, it looks like actually, if I think about it, I probably want to slide him forward 50, which is, that's way more annoying. So let's double check that my script actually saved. Because at the very least, we should be further down. Oh, this is not using my variable. That's why, okay. <laughs> yep, all right, so now it's offset. So offset is up 50 for two of them and zero for one of them. And that's how we're doing it. So this is basically all I have today. All right, well, we're gonna test this. With testing is important and I wanna see this happen. Um, if we can make something that is modular. Modularity is the name of the game. Um. <laughs> okay, we've got the uh, feet love to touch a flat surface bug. So now my person is back and there's a lot going on here. So basically the feet are gonna end up in wherever the sitting is and that is the opposite of the other two. Yeah, so I would need this basically to be on the ground, um, which is not great. It's not really ideal for what I want. So I can now sit this here, I believe, and really I guess there for where the person's foot should be. <laughs> Um, one of the problems with moving the group is that I'm actually moving the uh, hitbox for it. So this one is closer. Um, so if I instead did like object select, all right, so let's set it back to where it was. And then I do object select so that when I click this, I only click the, uh, let's get out of this. Let's see, are we're on object select. And now when I click this little arrow here, I'm only moving and now, if I click this, I'm only moving, well, now I'm clicking the hitbox. Let's get into the hitbox so that we can select the, all right, whatever. We click the sit, sit transform. Now I can move it down and move the position without changing the hitbox to interact with it. It's a whole thing. Um, so that's, this is the concession that I have right now. And this is not modular enough for me to publish to community content. Someday I will, but we're not there yet. But at least we got the sit where we want it and it's just going wherever the player's feet should be. We could, I don't know, there's probably some way you could like make like two little footprints. So you indicate that that is gonna be where the sitting happens. Um, there's a lot of ways we could do this to make it clear to the user that it works out of the box. But what I don't wanna do is ship something that's going to have them clip weirdly through things. It's funny, but it's not helpful helping people create. Um, so that was uh, scripting modularity and publishing for community content. Um, thank you everyone for joining me and I will see you all in the future.